Most sports talking heads make predictions, then hope you forget about how wrong they were. But not Mackie and Judd. Write this down. This is the big leagues, where we own our terrible predictions. Write that down. And keep track of each other's batting averages. It's Write That Down. Write it down. You like writing things down. With Mackie and Judd. Yep. We are the only show in America... With grapefruits large enough to actually put statistics next to our predictions and put our reputations and careers on the line. When are you going to admit that you were wrong, Judd? Every Wednesday I do it twice, and it's it's painful at times, but you know what? It's the price of the fame that we've achieved. It really is, yes. It's the it's 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 the it's costly not being able to go out to the St. Louis Park Cub Foods anymore in public without it's impossible. closing it down. Mm-hmm. But you know, thankfully uh, this audience has helped us thrive in life. So anyhow, uh, yeah, this is write that down. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. We keep track of batting averages and home runs. And listeners, if you guys want to participate like Matt is about to, you can send us a message through the Score North app, and we'll get you all registered so before we dive into where we were right and wrong and our predictions for the week here a shout out to our friends at equity partners so equity partners believe that the house selling process should be a lot more hassle free than it usually is and uh, with their we have program so here's the things that you get when you work with equity partners they will partner with you to fix up your home before you put it on the market so Anything from simple fixes to a total remodel, anything that helps you get the most value out of your home, they are here to help you with. And then from there, and this might be the biggest benefit, you can move before you sell. So you don't have to line up, the, you don't have to worry about contingencies and the timing, which would be kind of a pain. Find out more at equitypartnersmn.com. All right, let's get into the accountability session here, and then we'll get to our predictions. Let's do it. We'll start with Judd. Judd, you said Miguel Sano will hit no fewer than three home runs in his rehab start with the Saints. He hit exactly three home runs. Including one his last uh, game. Yep, so you had a little buzzer beater there from old Miguel Sano. Nice work. All right, I had three things come off the board here. I said Ricky Fowler will finish top five at the 3M Open. Uh, He made the cut, but he was pretty bad. I said Miguel Sano will hit a home run in his first game back with the Twins. He almost did. A little warning track power, but nope. Oh, Didn't happen. Okay. Sorry. However, I told you guys, Byron Buxton will homer in his first game after the All-Star break. I, my first, just so you guys know, my first iteration of this prediction, and I, I, I decided to broaden it to what it, what it wound up being, is I wanted to say he'll homer in his first at-bat after the All-Star break. But I thought, if I say his first game, it's still a home run. So right, right. It's a home hey. run here. But I, I just want you to know that like, I almost went the step sure. further, which also would have been correct. I didn't have the, the guts to do it, though. So a little, little dinger there for old Macadac. All right, the listeners, little dinger of their own here, I think. Seth predicted in 2021 and 2022, a player from a Minnesota high school will be a top five pick in the NBA draft. And so we had Jalen Suggs in 2021 and then Chet Holmgren in 2022. And the fact that he made that prediction two years ago, I think, yeah, those guys were projected to be pretty good, but it had to play out that way. And Chet yeah. Holmgren had to play well at Gonzaga. And Absolutely. so there you have it. Nice little round chipper for Seth. All right, Declan, you said the Twins will make a trade in the last week at some point before this week's write that down. They have not. Yeah. Okay. And then you did a lot of home runs being hit here. A lot of, are, are the are the baseballs juiced here and write that down? Maybe. You said at least Maybe. five different players will record eights or worse on the par five 18th at the 3M Open over the weekend. And uh, you stopped counting at five. So I don't even know how many it was. But <laughs> damn, that's a par five for PGA professionals. And it was so difficult that multiple players recorded triple bogey or worse. So there you have it. Nice Oof. job, Declan. Thanks, man. I saw so Scott Piercy meltdown on the back nine for oh, a Tony yeah. Finau victory. So here's where it is. Declan still leads both categories here. 494 batting average and 13 home runs. Judd's at 371 with seven home runs. I'm at 293 with eight home runs. Listeners at 287 with 10 home runs on the season. All time, Judd leads with 233 career hits. And the listeners lead with 29 career home runs. So... 
there you have it. There is your accountability session for the week where we actually hold each other to the fire for being wrong. Let's get Matt in here. He's our guest listener predictor on Write That Down. Matt, what's going on, man? When did you first become a Minnesota sports fan? Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, ooh, that's a tough one. I'd say probably the early 2000s with the Minnesota Twins. You know, like the 03, 04 teams. Uh, you had like Mikheyevich, Guzman, Rivas, all those guys. Like I remember the runs that they made. Those were kind of like really uh, like important times for me coming into Minnesota sports. And then, you know, obviously Randy Moss and Kevin Garnett also icons. Yeah, I think there's a lot of fans, and I, I was a little earlier than that. I started getting into the Twins more like after 1991, but there's a lot of fans that got into the Twins in the early 2000s, and they've seen two playoff game victories in 20-plus <laughs> years. So maybe they yeah. can they can break that. Um, all right, we're going to start with Matt here over to Judd, Declan, and then background. We'll take three trips around the room. Matt, you're the leadoff hitter, man. What's your first prediction? All right, so this first one, uh, write that down. It's going to be a Twins prediction here. You don't have to let me know if you think it's a home run or not. I don't think it is. But uh, Byron Buxton will have at least 30 home runs by the end of August. So I know he hit one last night. I saw that. Um, so I kind of thought about maybe 20 with that number, but I think 30 is a good number for the end of August. I don't think it's a home run prediction because he's, he's pacing for it, but yeah. it's good. If you want to make it a home run prediction, you could up it to like – I think 35 would be fair because he'd have to hit like 10 in a month. It's up to you. Yeah. If you want to leave it, you can leave it. It's cool. I think we'll just uh, we'll leave it. We'll go with 30. All right. All right. I like it. Over to Judd. All right. My, as promised, next Miguel Sano prediction is this. Sano will hit at least two home runs and strike out six times by next week's write that down. And I brought it down from eight to six because I don't, I'm not confident he's going to play a ton. So if I thought he was going to play a lot, I'd say 10 times, but I'm not. So at least two home runs and at least six strikeouts by next week's write that down. Okay. No. I, I had kind of a similar one. I might have, to, might have to tweak it now, but we'll go over to Declan here. All right. Write this down. All right, my uh, first one, I'll try this one again. Uh, the Twins will acquire at least two new pitchers to their 26-man roster by next week's write that down. So the trade deadline is next Tuesday. At yep. least two new pitchers will be acquired, and they'll be on the active roster by next week's Write That Down. That has to be the, the absolute bare minimum requirement for the Twins, yeah. right? If they, yeah. I think it's more like three right. to, That's to, to, to really least. give your team a, a boost. But, okay, write this down. We'll stay on these Twins predictions. I, I actually need your guys' help. What would I have to predict? I want I, I want my prediction to be Miguel Sano will have blank extra base hits between now and next week's write that down. What does that blank have to be for it to be a home run prediction? Five. Five. That's probably okay. Fair. So like one a game maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Five. Okay. I'm I'm gonna say I th I think he's gonna get hot. I legitimately think he's gonna get hot. So. I'll say that he'll have at least five. Well, and do they play? They probably play next Wednesday. So I'm, I want to give myself that game too. So he'll have at least five X. No, screw it. He'll have at least five <laughs> extra base week, hits. Yeah, you do it. By next week's write that down. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now that I've said that out loud, I don't know if I have faith in it, but I do think he's going to get hot at some point. I don't think he just, I don't think his career just ends with the Twins without some sort of home run barrage. So, all right, back to Matt, your second prediction. All right. So. I wanted to make a wild prediction here, and I was having a, a little bit of trouble scraping the barrel for what free agents were available right now that I knew or thought that they might go after. So I'm, I'm going to say, write this down. The Wild will acquire at least one of these five players. Phil Kessel, Nino Niederreiter, Eric Haula, JT Miller, or John Klinberg. By what deadline are you looking at? Uh, I'm thinking start of the season. Okay. Did Nino just sign? Nino signed. Uh, did he? Okay. And Hala got traded. traded. But, I mean, Devils. the dude gets traded every five seconds, yeah. it feels like. I wanted to have some fun with it because they're former wild players. So maybe yeah. they, they, there's a chance they could come back. So. Let's. Can we extend it out to the trade deadline? Do you want to do that? Yeah. yeah. Is okay. that a, do you guys think that's a home run? So you guys would have to call that one. Well, it's five players, so you have a good amount. Um, 
But yeah, I, I you know what? Why not? Yeah, I think that's a home run. It's pretty specific, and yeah, a couple of those specific. guys are, seem to be tied in. So yep. okay, we'll say by the trade deadline here to give you a little bit more leeway here, Judd. All right, Sonny Gray and Joe Ryan will start the first two games of the Twins' opening round playoff series. So I'm just going with they're going. This is a parlay. This is a parlay. Yep, and I'm going with they are going to obviously win the uh, Central Division, make the playoffs. So I am just predicting this flat out. Everything happens, and Sonny Gray and Joe Ryan start the first two games. The only thing I will say is I think Gray starts game one, but that part off the record. Got so it. it's just those two in some order start games one and two of the best three series. Okay, interesting. Okay. So it's, it's it's kind of a it's a Twins will make the playoffs parlay. It's yes. a twi- Twins won't add a big time starting pitcher at the deadline parlay. Yes, a lot of sort of sub parlay items. It's a in home here. run. Write it down. You like it takes a lot of guts down? to do what I just did. It does. It really does. <laughs> okay. Um, my second prediction. Uh, I'm I'm gonna hedge a little bit here, and, and this actually, so the Twins could be technically aggressive enough, and this can still happen. So write this down. Carlos Correa will rip the Twins for not being aggressive enough by the end of the year. Yes, dude. So they, they could technically <laughs> still get like two relievers, and that still might not suffice to Carlos. So I'm going to put this by the end of the year. So at some point in the offseason, Carlos Correa is going to rip the Twins for not being aggressive enough during the course of the 2022 season. And off the record, do you think it'll be an aggressive ripping, or do you think it'll be kind of a passive aggressive comment that he makes to a reporter that that asks him a question? It'll, I think it'll, he'll be pretty frontal, dude. Like the guy, yeah. the guy doesn't mince words. Um, I, I think he'll just he'll pretty much say at point blank that they weren't aggressive enough. He's he's he, pretty frontal like that. And if that happens, he'll probably be right. And I'm predicting uh, off Declan's prediction, Ken Rosenthal. Okay, Kenny? is the author. Is a guy Kenny? Yes, it'll a guy be a, like a, that, a national guy. will come in a national and, guy, and he'll and, and and he'll get comfortable because he likes that person, and the gloves come off. I love. I it. like the prediction though; it's a good prediction. I love it. Could Scott Boris maybe make a comment? Just say, you know, it was really really disappointing that the Twins didn't didn't do more for my client. Does he usually do that? Like nah. like he rips he rips teams on behalf of his clients. I don't know if he'll. I don't know if he would uh, rip the team. He also, you know, he wants I mean, to keep a, a relationship. relationship. He's got with with the Royce wins. Lewis and stuff. Yeah. Although maybe he doesn't give a rip about that because Royce Lewis is just going to hit free agency in six years anyways, right? Maybe Boris doesn't care. I don't know. Anyhow. All right. Uh, my second prediction. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a one-upper here. I'm going to one-up Declan and say the Twins will add at least three pitchers before the trade deadline. That's what I think the bare minimum should be. So they will add at least three pitchers. Is that a home run if they add three pitchers or more? Damn, it's damn close. Like I, that's a lot. I don't see them doing it. So okay. I'd say yes. And and yeah, by and and they're adding three pitchers. There. How about to their twenty six man roster? Because like if yes. they add in some yes. guy that goes the mile, like that. Oh no, that, no yep, slappies. Yep, yep, yep. Three three slappies are out. Major league roster pitchers. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Or more. Yeah. If they had, yeah, right. if they, if maybe they had seven, I don't, I don't know what they're thinking, but it'll all play out here. Okay, Matt, your third and final prediction, sir. All right. So for my last prediction, I got to go with the Vikings on this one. Uh, write this down: Daniel Hunter and Zadarius Smith will combine for at least playing in twenty-eight games, Ooh. twenty-two sacks, mm. and one Pro Bowl appearance. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think yeah, the, the, the this is definitely a home run here. Just with yeah, how injured probably. those guys have been, so it's health, it's produ- productivity, it's voting. So I like it. If those guys play a combined twenty eight games, it's on defensively. Oh, yeah. Yep, it is definitely on. So well, Matt, great work on your first ever appearance on Write That Down. Since you have this life changing platform right now here. These 15 minutes of fame, uh, if you will. Is there anyone in your life you would like to thank that brought you to this pinnacle moment? Uh, probably like my grandparents, my grandpa, and my uncle. They got me kind of into the uh, the Vikings and the Wild and the Twins. And then uh, I'd have to give a shout out to my wife too. You know, she puts up with all my antics on on Sundays and during playoff season. You know, so you know, shout out to them for getting me into Minnesota sports. So. Love it, man. All right. Great work, Matt. We'll definitely get you on again sometime if you'd like. And good luck with your predictions. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.
Awesome, man. Good stuff there from guest listener predictor Matt. Well done. Always love getting the, the, the first-time predictors on the show here, get their feet wet. Judd, your third and final prediction is presented by our friends over at Valley Park Medical Clinic. You know, you don't have to be embarrassed, guys, okay? ED is a thing. And if you are in the greater Minneapolis area, Valley Park is the only clinic Minnesota uh, in Minnesota to use the True Pulse Protocol, which is one of the most effective ED solutions available. The treatments are surgery-free, drug-free, and non-invasive and the Valley Park Medical Clinic team is highly, highly trained. So you can you can trust this process. ValleyParkMedicalClinic.com. ValleyParkMedicalClinic.com. Now over to a man who has no performance issues and write that down these past few seasons, Judd, and his third and final prediction. All right. Um, as we, we've been uh, discussing what the Twins might do by the trade deadline on Tuesday, I'm actually going to give you a prediction of the Yankees will obtain Reds Right-hander Luis Castillo by the trade deadline. Oh, so they're getting Ca- wow. So Castillo's the big fish here. Like he is the main guy, um, big fish. and and he will and he will end up with the Bronx Bombers, who have plenty okay. to trade and are one thousand percent all in. Yeah, Yankee fan. Yeah, Yankee fan. Judd making Yankee, oh. making Yankee predictions. So that you just can't wait. Runner. Can't Love wait for stripes. episode three of the Captain to come out. Oh, I, actually, I can't. I, I am really excited. I, for that. I binged the I first two on Sunday good. night. Oh my god, it was it's great. Derek Jeter, the the, uh, that, the the David Wells thing that Phil yes. is talking about. That was awesome. Boom. That we was so cool. We don't do that here. Yeah. And then and then the scene where he so he beats the Yankees in arbitration for a five million dollar oh, salary and then it to him. was it the Espies and George Steinbrenner is yes. up at the yeah. podium and like let's 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 also you know, bring up our captain Derek Jeter and Jeter takes the microphone and says you're only doing that because I just beat you in arbitration and in straight face <laughs> the vindictiveness is awesome yeah. I love that part. He said, "If you, if you, he, he said, loyalty that's a one way street is stupidity. Yeah, and that's goes, exactly if, right too. If you slight me, I can't remember the word he used, but I remember when it happened, what you were wearing when <laughs> what it happened. Is my favorite, <laughs> and so how I'm great. gonna rip your heart out. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Who are we on here? Declan. Dex. Third and final prediction for me: uh, a SummerSlam prediction. We got SummerSlam this weekend, Phil, in WWE. So I'm gonna do a little uh, two item parlay. I will say." Both Liv Morgan and Bianca Belair retain their titles at SummerSlam. So I'm pretty confident Liv will. Like if they if Vince McMahon was still running the show, I can guarantee actually that that Ronda Rousey takes the belt right back from Liv Morgan because that's what he would do. I'm actually not as confident in the B- Bianca versus Becky match because it's their first meeting since WrestleMania. Um she's held the title for a long time, but also I feel like they're not going to squash Bianca at SummerSlam two years in a row, just like they did this time last year when when Becky Lynch came back. Um, and Judd, those are my great SummerSlam takes, and I'm sure you have a lot to add to it. But yeah, Liv Morgan, Bianca Belair retain their titles at SummerSlam this weekend. Judd, what's your hottest SummerSlam take? Mm, let's see here. Um, how they explain the Vince thing and what they do with it. That's my hottest take. Oh, I'm curious. That's, a, that's actually a good it. segue here because I have a I have a post SummerSlam prediction here right. to wrap up, write that down. I love this. I don't know that this is a home run because this is what should happen, but Triple H, who has now been named head of all creative at WWE, he's taking over for Vince McMahon as the head of creative and talent relations. Triple H will open Monday Night Raw. He will make an appearance in the opening segment of Monday Night Raw after SummerSlam. Now, is it possible they could tease Triple H for like hour three and then I'm wrong? Yes, but I think he's gonna. you're going to hear his music at some point in the opening segment. Time to play the game. Oh, I'm get, I, I'm now, I'm, now I'm tuning in just so I can potentially hear that yeah. and get goosebumps. I think they need him to come out there, set the tone. This is a new era of WWE wrestling. Let's make it happen. So that's my prediction. He will he will appear in the opening segment of Monday Night Raw. I like it. On Monday. I like it. Time to play the game. They could also just fumble this away. I could see this whole thing just get fumbled and they do nothing of substance. And I don't know. So there it is. Those are your write that down predictions and your accountability session here on Mackie and Judd. The only show in America that actually keeps track of our predictions with statistics, putting our careers on the line every single week. We have started our Vikings training camp coverage as well on a daily basis over on Purple Daily. Judd is out there every single day. We're pumping out the daily episodes. We've got Purple Daily bonus episodes starting 
next week again with Realistic Randy Rance and Declan, with Before We Die, Jesse Pierce and Thor Nystrom, and maybe a couple other things up our sleeve as well. So uh, if you're not already subscribed to the both the Score North and Purple Daily YouTube channels and podcast feeds, definitely check those out. And we'll see you guys tomorrow for Reckless Speculation Thursday on Mackie and Judd.